my name is Praveen Bhanira. I run a company called Viz Experts. Um, Viz Experts is a 12 year old company. We started uh, late 2005. Um, we are a 3D graphics company, and uh, I would like to say we are we are passionate people for 3D graphics. Um, in terms of what we do, we work with uh, a lot of government organizations uh, to solve their uh, data to decision problems. Uh, we make tools that help them take decisions using 3D technologies and virtual reality. So virtual reality is an area that's becoming more and more popular um, and we also help people bridge the gap between uh, 3D GIS as well as virtual reality. Virtual reality is going to get bigger and better. Uh, it's something that a lot of people would have uh, already uh, you know, be aware. I think the most exciting thing about virtual reality going forward is what it can do for training. If you see in the defense, uh, our soldiers or our uh, people who are going in the battlefield, who are going to go and fight an insurgent, uh, an assault or terrorist, um, virtual reality is a great way to train them on the situations that they'll face on the ground when they actually are in that combat. Um, so virtual reality is a game changer for, um, uh, for training applications, specifically for the defense area. Um, and um, the, the way I see this uh, really transforming uh, the industry is, is by bringing in real 3D GIS and bringing it into virtual reality. Uh, because you have real data that's coming in and that gets into the synthetic world, which is the virtual world, and then it makes it, virtual reality makes it more interactive and immersive, which allows us to train better. So in the defense area, I'm very excited about virtual reality. It's going to get more and more popular. Um, this area of uh, gaming, so to speak, is called serious gaming industry. Um, so I think virtual reality is going to be a game changer for the gaming industry. In terms of uh, uh, common man usage, uh, I am also very excited uh, to see my son, you know, play with virtual reality. Um, he's a great user of Pokemon Go. Um, uh, there are a few uh, very very interesting ideas we have as with experts uh, about uh, doing some really cool stuff for kids and things like that. Um, but I do see uh, in summary that um, virtual reality and augmented reality, even going forward can be a real game changer for, for small kids um, doing things which are in the edutainment space. Uh, you know, teaching kids how cars work, for example, teaching kids how planes work, uh, teaching kids, uh, you know, how to play Hot Wheels games. That's my favorite, uh, you know, uh, allowing kids to make Hot Wheels tracks that are as big as this room, you know, and, um, and figure out where the cars will go from. So learn design skills, you know, kids can learn architecture, you know, or basics of architecture and uh, you know, uh, have a lot of fun with it. You know, so that's the kind of stuff I feel virtual reality uh, will take us into uh, in the very near future. So, very exciting. So I think the first requirement is that uh, this is a very cutting edge or rather bleeding edge area. Uh, I've been doing virtual reality for 15 years. Uh, the 3D graphics area uh, is something that m moves faster than the Moore's law. If you know what that is. So, so 3D graphics is a very, very fast moving industry. So you have to really learn to be on the bleeding edge of technology if you want to be a player in this space. Um, something that's associated with this, but not necessarily the same, is that you have to be passionate for it. It's easy to get lost into the crowd. Uh, so if you are passionate about it, that's when you'll be able to keep a pace with this. So uh, you know, having the passion for technology, having the passion for virtual reality, interactive graphics, um, allows you to stay ahead of the curve uh, in this kind of a business and yeah I think those are two tips I would like to give anybody who's coming to this space uh, one thing that's really important also to understand is that it's not just a lot of fun you know virtual reality and games is a lot of fun but you have to really understand what the end customer wants and why he would pay for it um, and that's a problem that I think a lot of us techies are not necessarily very good at Understanding, so you have to, uh, as an entrepreneur, understand why a customer will buy a product or technology or service and uh, what is the value he will derive from that. So that's a uh, tip that I would like to give. Uh, regarding getting talent, uh, so we've, uh, uh, you know, had a lot of great success in finding people who are very passionate for virtual reality and graphics. So the way uh, we do things at Viz Experts is that we hire people and train them. Uh, so we hire for passion and then train them for the skills. Um, I've been blessed that we have a very nice senior team uh, which has that kind of skill set and passion. So we are able to train people pretty fast uh, in that area. We are a platform agnostic company. Mm -hmm. We work with, uh, you know, we, we uh, build software mm -hmm. and we integrate hardware. Mm -hmm. 
right? So my background is also coming from Silicon Graphics, which was a hardware company. So this is this is my expertise. I am very good with hardware, understanding hardware, taking it and bring it, bring it into applications. Um, so so whether it's Apple, whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, we understand how to take technology, integrate it so that it works for the customer. So yes, why not? Whatever is the best hardware out there, whatever is the best development platform out there, we just take it and use it. Virtual reality and augmented reality are not necessarily separate. Um, uh, both have their own ways, um, but with augmented reality, you are able to get a higher level of immersion than in virtual reality. Having said that, uh, virtual reality today uh, can give you much higher fidelity uh, interactions, which augmented reality is not able to do. So if you have played Pokemon, you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so to, augmented reality still has a ways to go, some ways to go before it can match that level of fidelity, which we are able to do in virtual reality, right? But the, the long-term solution where I want a soldier to be able to uh, you know, train really like on the ground, augmented reality is the thing. So augmented reality is where I put it into a forest and there is a virtual enemy coming in, mm. right? Virtual reality is where the whole forest is virtual, mm. right? So both have their own applications. In augmented reality, I have to take him physically to a forest area, mm. right? Or make a forest area in the training academy, right? Um, and then do certain things. Making a virtual soldier come in which looks like a real virtual soldier is difficult, right? Uh, in the virtual reality environment, everything is virtual. So it's easier to bring that uh, virtual enemy come into the scene. So there are applications for both of them. Uh, uh, depending upon certain cases, AR might be better, certain cases VR might be better. But I think long term for real immersion, AR is the right thing to do. I mean, I have seen a lot of AR, uh, which is nice, but not impressive. Uh, I have seen uh, videos of a lot of AR which is forward looking um, and a lot of those are marketing videos so you don't, you don't know which one, like how real they are, right? Um, but it could be anybody's guess. One year, two years, three years. The thing that's, there are two things which are most important in such applications. The number one is the visual fidelity of what you're seeing. The number two is the interaction and both the places more uh, you know, innovations need to happen. So for example, I want to be able to see Shubham sitting like Shubham, right? A virtual Shubham right in front of me. So that's the fish, uh, high fidelity 3D rendering that has to be done. But then when I stand up to shake hands with him, my hand should be tracked, right? So that this becomes real virtual, right? Um, you know, so in the high end space, the defense space, there's a lot of technologies which have been created, like haptics, which, is, uh, which gives me force feedback. So say I shake his hands, you know, there's a virtual device that gives me that feedback that I'm holding somebody. Today, with the current level of gadgets, you won't get that haptic feedback. You will squeeze somebody's hand, but there's no hand there, so it will just go inside, right? So we have ways to go, right? So it really depends upon what the application is that we're trying to do. For certain applications, uh, VR might be good enough. Certain applications, the current level of AR might be good enough, right? My kid just loves to play Pokemon, and right? when I see it, I'm like, you know, but it's good, right? It solves the purpose, it, uh, it addresses the customer requirement, and that's most important, right? So it totally depends upon the application. But I do see that uh, AR is going to be really exciting, right? Uh, the, the, the AR that I'm envisioning, right? That there's no physical camera, it's, it's a virtual camera right in front of me, right? So that's what I'm imagining. It should look like, a, it better look like a real one for me. I'm, I'm the one who's wearing glasses, right? So, <laughs> so uh, Let's let's just wait and watch. It's gonna, but it's gonna be a lot of fun.